You are joining us here on Weather Command. Wednesday marking the statistical peak of the hurricane season. Yeah. It's a date on the calendar when, historically speaking, we are most likely to have a name storm in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, or even the Gulf. But not all seasons are the same. And in fact, it's been two weeks since we've had a name storm. Hard to find one season that's like the other, mm -hmm. right? I mean, wow. We have a new area, though, to watch. Uh, this morning, environmental conditions could support some slow development as we head into the weekend or maybe into early next week. Let's bring in Michael Brennan. Michael's the director of the National Hurricane Center. Michael, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, let's get your thoughts first on this uh, new area. We'll call it new because it was yesterday that your team put yep. this thing out there. Uh, this area that we're going to watch, it's, it's going to be slow to develop if it develops. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, as you mentioned, a low chance with the, the tropical wave itself is actually expected to move off the west coast of Africa sometime tomorrow on Friday. After that time, it looks like the conditions will, uh, could be favorable for some gradual development. So only a 30 percent chance of formation over the next seven days. But obviously something to keep an eye out on uh, as we head into the weekend and early next week. This, as you mentioned, the time of the year when we would expect to see the potential for formation out here across the deep tropical Atlantic. And uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that and everything else, uh, as we always do here going forward. Yeah. So we have time to see how this does develop. Yeah. And, and as we reflect on the season we've had so far, right, we had Hurricane Aaron, which did achieve a Category 5 in strength, Tropical Storm Fernand, but then it was crickets. And so to see yeah. the basin go from producing this powerful hurricane, fortunately no landfall, then okay. to not being able to sustain that most recent invest that we did have, in some ways, it does feel a little weird. We're talking about prior seasons, right? Not all are created equally. Is there a prior yep. season, though, however, that at least comes to mind for you that perhaps played out in a similar way? Well, you know, every, as you said, every season plays out differently. You know, we have large scale conditions that become favorable or unfavorable and you know, every week or two as we go through the season. So it's not a steady line of activity. Even when we have a busy season, we still have quiet periods. But you can think back just to last year where we did have a pretty quiet period, parts of September, uh, even in August, and then things got really busy as we had Helene and then Milton, and we had a very busy back end of the season. So I think for people overall, the, the main message is you just have to be ready uh, as we get later into the season, in particular, late September into October, the development potential shifts back over to the western part of the basin in the Caribbean, the Gulf, near the East Coast, so we can have those sort of homegrown type systems that can develop and affect land very quickly. Uh, so people can't be really letting their guard down at this point and just keep watching. We'll be watching there with you as we go through the rest of the season. And, and I think you, you sort of answered this next question I was going to ask mm -hmm. because there, there are tools that you guys can use in the toolbox to, to see yep. how perhaps the rest of the season could fare. From the, from the perspective of tropical activity, and this is typically speaking, right, we're about 45% complete. So we're not quite halfway there, yep. but we're getting there. We've only had the one hurricane that Marissa had mentioned, and there's that mm -hmm. activity um, graphic that we often show. I, I am wondering, just to get a peek behind the mm -hmm. curtain, tools that you guys are able to use at the NHC that gives you that ability to see if, let's say in this case, the second half will be backloaded. We know that activity typically has that, but are, are there some yep. of those tools? Well, you know, we're looking at model guidance. You know, our outlooks go out seven days, but our, we partner with the Climate Prediction Center looking out at sort of large scale patterns, you know, two to three weeks out in advance, and they put those outlooks out one to two times a week. The other thing we're looking at is on the sort of the climate modeling scale, you know, there, there is the potential for La Nina to develop as we head into the late portions of the hurricane season. And that would tend to uh, make the Atlantic more favorable, especially late in the season, the October, November timeframe where we could have a prolonged. Uh, you know, sort of season in terms of activity. So that's something we'll be watching. But really here, we're mostly focused on that sort of day to day out through the next seven or so days as we monitor the outlook and, and, and you know, we're issuing that, uh, looking at that formation potential every six hours. But, um, you know, we're looking at those sort of large scale conditions right now, the tropical Atlantic still rather stable, somewhat dry. We'll see how this next wave fares, but those conditions can change as the large scale pattern shifts we could get very quickly into a situation where the environment could become a lot more favorable. And here in September, that could still mean formation just about anywhere across the basin. Anywhere's fair game. That makes it yeah. easy. Hey, uh, <laughs> you mentioned the day-to-day, -day, right? And day-to-day, and, and -day it's going to change, and it's a lot of waiting to see. Yeah. But I mean, I guess in these moments of downtime, when it's not heavy into the forecasting and issuing advisories and warnings, what does a day look like at the NHC for you? Well, right now, yeah, we are doing that day-to-day -day weather watch. We're very close to having a, a system in the Eastern Pacific in our area of responsibility has a high chance. So we're 
talking to the meteorological service there in Mexico, talk, looking at what potential hazards that might bring. We just wrapped up working uh, with uh, Hurricane Kiko out in mm -hmm. the Central Pacific. But on a day-to-day -day basis here, you know, we're doing the post analysis for the storms we've already had this year, working on the best tracks, gathering the impacts. Uh, but the, really the focus this time of year is still on that day-to-day -day weather watch and gearing up for what the, is yet to come with the season. Well, in the moments of peace, <laughs> we appreciate the check-in. Yeah. And, and, you know, just, I guess, sure. that forward reminder that, yeah, we still have the back end of the season to go. And typically this one can feature, this part of the season can feature some very intense and powerful hurricanes. So um, we'll see Absolutely. how it will. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but we appreciate all of that insight regardless. Director of the National Hurricane Center, Michael Brennan, thank you.